Now we are going to demonstrate how easy it is to populate Gemini letters with LEDs. We will be using a GE Tetra LED system that contains GE Tetra low profile modules. These modules are ideal for gem light form channel letters. The letters we are using are formed with our custom designed CAV material with built in light diffusion. We are using red Helvetica Bold round face gem lights populated with red GE LEDs. I developed a checklist for myself to use as a guide. Step one, drill in notch holes. Determine where to drill the power supply wire holes based on the mounting option you chose, either raceway or direct on a wall. These letters will be mounted onto a raceway, so we will be drilling quarter inch holes in the center of the letter backs. UL requires that our backs or cans be notched with weep holes on each drop. This notch will allow any collected water to escape. You could also drill this hole, but we built a custom unit for this purpose. Next, we will drill small holes in the returns of the letter faces to allow for attaching the face to the letter back. I will properly position the face on the can and will drill through both. Step two, fill cans with LEDs. Once our holes are drilled, we prepare the letter by wiping them clean. This will allow for better LED module tape adhesion. Next, lay out your LED string into the cans to determine how many LEDs you will need to light each letter. With injection molded channel letters and halo lit fabricated letters, use a single line down the middle of the can with letters up to around a four inch stroke. Wider letters will require additional lines of LEDs. With gem light letters, Stagger the LEDs to consistently fill the back, trying to stay at least an inch away from the sides if possible. In this case, we are laying out red, which lights well. If we were installing these letters direct onto the wall, we would have drilled a power supply hole in the corner. But in this case, we are going onto a raceway, so we will splice together some modules. Once you have determined your string length, Cut the modules off the string and then peel off the double face tape masking. Now again, lay out the string and lightly press the modules onto the back, not setting until we test our lights. Now test light the letters. First, strip the wires off the first module and push the wire through the power supply hole. Then using a power supply with alligator clips, place the face over the can and power up each letter. The goal is to minimize shadows and look for dark areas. Should you see a dark area, pull up the modules and reposition them until you get an even look. As a helpful tip, do not light your modules direct to 110. Make sure you always run them through a proper power supply. Additionally, you may place a light meter on the face to check the lux value. Again, our goal is to balance the light output of each letter within the set. Most people will not have a light meter, so a visual check should be okay. If you find that you do not have enough modules, you can always add to the string and wire nut additional modules to the existing string. Now I will trim the wire on the end module and place a GE end cap over the wires. Once your LEDs are in place, press down each module to set the double face tape. For our demonstration, we are securing every other module with a custom hold down bracket. Based on the letters used, some installers secure them with screws or rivets. Here's a helpful hint. Some systems may require the addition of silicone between a few of the modules as a safeguard should any tape come loose or to keep loose wires from creating shadows on the faces. 
Now you may populate all of your letters. Based on the system used, there may be some connecting wires needed. At this point, you should be ready to hand off your letters to a licensed electrical contractor who will wire together the letters and attach them to the proper number of power supplies. In this case, our modules draw around 0.67 watts per module, or 90 modules equals 60 watts. Once the electrician has our letters wired, we will mount the letters to our raceway and then onto our wall. If you are using a raceway, most installers will drill a few pilot holes through the back of the can in line with the location of the raceway and attach using self-tapping sheet metal screws. Make sure your letters are properly kerned and spaced on the raceway before attaching. Once attached to the raceway, you now need to attach the faces to the cans. This involves fitting the face over the can and screwing in small screws through your pre-drilled holes to keep the face secured to the back. We painted the heads of the screws the same color as the face return or trim. At this time, you also need to decide whether your face needs to be sealed. Some systems or regulations require running a bead of silicone between the face and the can to keep moisture out. One good thing about using a raceway is that you can do most of this work in your shop before going to the job site. Once our letters are ready to go, we'll bring them out to the job site and do our installation. Our copy is all on one raceway, so installation on the wall should be simple. It will be helpful to use two people for this job. We are installing these letters onto a corrugated building, so that is why we're using a raceway. If we were installing directly to the wall, we may not use a raceway. We are using self-tapping sheet metal screws to hold the raceway to the wall, and we are running a standard 110 plug to an outside power source. Again, always consult with your electrical contractor for proper final wiring. The final step in installation will involve leveling our sign and putting in self-tapping sheet metal screws.